Hello everyone, how are you today? It's Sharon here from the blog I Restore Stuff, ready for a DIY live here on the Essential Stencils page and I'm also cross-posting live to my I Restore Stuff page. We've got a bit of a different angle here today because I'm going to be working on something over here it, and it's too big to put on the table. So um, welcome, if you're joining me for the first time you've never been on one of our Essential Stencil Lives, let us know in the comments. Um, there's a chance to win some prizes at the end of our live. If you're watching the replay, comment the word replay and you could also win a prize in the 24 hours after we go live. So hi Tracy, thank you so much for sprinkling. I do love it when you all share our lives around. That's fantastic. Um, <clears throat> so let's see, just going to uh, refresh my page here on the laptop. You can probably hear, it could be all happening here today. We've got so much going on in my house and I'm the only one home apart from the dog, but she could be barking at the door any minute now because I'm expecting my Stencil of the Month Club um, set to arrive today. Melissa's design with the collaboration, I'm supposed to be demoing that and our postage, it was supposed to come yesterday which for me yesterday, it's the 15th here, it's actually my birthday, so we've got that going on as well. Um, but the 14th is when it was supposed to arrive, so I know it's Valentine's Day for you all over there tonight, so happy Valentine's, my friends. Um, wearing a little bit of red so we could uh, get in the spirit of things for Valentine's for you all. We had a lovely Valentine's Day here in Australia, um, just celebrated with dinner with my hubby. We had some yummy ice cream, chockies for dessert. The dog, if you hear her barking, like I said before, if you've just joined me, thank you Phyllis. She could be barking at the postman because I'm expecting my stencil of the month club stencils to arrive anytime between now and when I finish my live. So hopefully it's sooner rather than later because I really wanted to use them today. I'll, I don't think that's barking at the front door for the postman, but anyway. I'll see if I can distract her with treats in a minute. Um, so I've got a couple of things. It is upcycling challenge week. In fact, the next two weeks are um, upcycling challenge and you can join the challenge using the link that I've put in the description of our live. Um, just a minute, sorry guys. I will try and distract her, give her a little bit of something to chew on. Here, Olive. And off she goes, sit in your little crate for a little bit. I'll show you her in a minute because we'll be moving across to my, to my left over here. I've got a bookcase that I'm going to be upcycling. It's one that I've had in my workshop for probably a number of years now. And it was just, it was painted white. It's, it was just looking a bit shabby because I did use it for storing paints on. But now since then we've got um, big shelving in the garage to store paints on. And so I thought, what a great idea. You can source some things in your house. Now, I actually did not get a chance to do uh, some more thrifting or we call it op shopping in Australia here this week. But you know what? I thought I'd show you some ideas that you could do to um, thrift or um, look for things around your house. Okay. So for me, I've got this bookshelf here. Let me just show you a sneak peek. We'll be working on that in a minute. Uh, you may have seen it on my Instagram stories. I've painted this a lovely kind of off-white grayish color. And then I've done the insides of the shelves a uh, darker green, like an olive green color. It is a little bit patchy, so it's only got two coats. Obviously needs a third coat to go on there, but I'll be doing that afterwards. I want to paint something down the sides of the bookshelf, so I'll be doing that. Stay tuned for that. Also, I thought of this. Um, now, someone else I've seen in our Stencil of the Month Club, and a few people have done that now, is just getting, this is an old maple syrup bottle, and I've removed the labels from it. We're just gonna be painting that up, and maybe stenciling or, or putting a transfer on it. I'm loving these honeybee transfers. They are, I think they're back, still back in stock. I also, oh, I wanted to show you what I did this week. I finally got to use one of my vintage trucks. Now, those are in stock also this week. If you check out my Instagram Reels and my Facebook Reels, you'll see that I just finished doing that yesterday and I popped that up on my iRestore stuff, at iRestore stuff on Instagram, Facebook and all of the places. So this is another thing you might find lying around the house that you could upcycle. Here's another thing. It's a little tiny mini 
cheese board, I guess, or a little serving board, but it make, would make a great sign to hang on the wall. So you could upcycle that, pop a little stencil on there, or again, a honeybee transfer or something. I probably won't be doing all of these today, but guess what? We've got two weeks of the upcycle challenge, so maybe I can do something then uh, for next week as well. I can save some of my projects for then. I've got a couple of tea towels. They're linen tea towels. They're actually used ones. In fact, I've probably, <laughs> probably got a stain or two. I have no idea. I didn't look very carefully, but I've pressed them. They're clean. They're clean. Um, but I've pressed them. Oh, I can see stains on this one. So, but you know what? I could cover up those stains with some stencils and some transfers. No, maybe not transfers because you want it to be able to wash and I'm just not 100% sure if um, they'll be still sealed within the wash. Um, so this one's got a couple of stains on it. Could do some stencils on a tea towel. Maybe you've got some new ones still in your stash in your cupboard. I'm just going to hang those there. Uh, another idea is you may just have a plain pillowcase or cushion cover in your house. Uh, and this one's just an Ikea cushion cover. It's just plain, but we could add a stencil or something to that also. So I'll leave those there, set them aside for a minute while we wait for our stencil of the month club to arrive, whether it does or not, I'm not sure. But I just wanted to remind you that if you join the stencil of the month club this month, you'll get Melissa's design, collaborative design with Essential Stencil. And it's such a beautiful idea. It's family tree related. So it's got the tree, little spaces where you can put your name, family, family's names, um, some gorgeous uh, family tree sayings, all to do with family. So that's just beautiful. Oh, thank you. People popping on saying happy birthday. Thank you so much, everybody. It's actually the 15th here in Australia. So it is my actual birthday, the day after Valentine's Day. So you can use uh, my code iRestoreStuff. You'll save 10% on the regular essential stencil site or if you order the Stencil of the Month Club, you get your first month free in the basic plan or 50% off your first month in the premium plan. So that's just a reminder of those. I'm going to start today by upcycling. Sorry, I'm the only one looking after the dog today and she is barking at every little noise. Olive, quiet, quiet. Good, quiet. She's in her little crate, which sometimes that's just for her. It's a little safe place that she can just rest and have a little sleep. So often she'll just do that. I'm just adding a bit of chalk paint in here to <clears throat> a dish because this is, uh, this is our Australian brand of chalk paint called Artisan Mineral Paint. So I am actually cross-posting live over onto my I restore stuff page. So if you are watching from my I restore stuff page, I just want to remind you that we um, do stock. If you're in Australia, that is, we do stock the artisan uh, mineral and chalk paints here in Australia. So just there we go. Now I can see comments on my laptop as well. All right. So I'm just going to paint this. Um, what is that? maple syrup jar with some chalk paint. Oh, Olive, shh, quiet. And I only need a little bit. Chalk paint's quite a thick and porous finish, but I do like the way that it has all of these um, little detailed areas down the bottom. And if we have a couple of coats on this, it'll come up nicely um, if we sand back a little bit to distress the bottle. Now, how am I going to do this? I don't know because now I'm holding it up in the air. I don't know how I'm going to do the back side of this. Maybe I'll hold on to the sides and then I can put it down. We are probably going to need a couple of coats to get everything, but this will make a cute little bud vase, I think. Pop the little bit of paint on the top. And um, I won't. Oops. Quiet. Oh, so sorry, guys. She has finished that treat already. Olive. Quiet. Okay, so if I paint the back of that, let's see if I can turn it around and I'll hold that here with my other hands. Oh, my other hand. 
paint the bottom of it. Can you see that there? That's what I'm painting. It's got all those fun details on the other side of it. And we may need a couple of coats for this. But this would look cute with a transfer on it. We've got the honeybee transfers there ready to go. Or I've also got some of the, the vintage butterflies, vintage postage stamps, um, which are also back in stock. And I did see, I think, the postage stamp one has only got a, a few left. Again, that one sold out really quickly last time. Um, so there's only a few left. If you did want that one, don't um, hesitate. Go use my code, I restore stuff, look up postage stamp, and you'll be able to grab a couple of those. Because the, the um, rub-on transfers are actually a single-use item. Unlike the stencils, you can use them over and over again. The, the um, rub-on transfers are just a single use. Okay, so because I want to do two coats of that, I use my recycle, again, upcycling or recycling, these little um, bubble bags that you get in packaging. I just burst the bubble and use it as a little bag because they're perfect size for paint. I'll grab, put a little bit of a plastic bag on top of that so we can put some more in later. I do have my hair dryer here, so I'll plug that in and dry that off a bit because that'll get it drying a little bit faster for our project here today. And let's see, um, where did I get the bottle? Evelyn, this is a maple syrup bottle. So I'm just, oh, did you hear that? <laughs> it's singing a song, oh my goodness. There you go. Um, so as I put the hairdryer over the lid, it's creating a, no a musical note. How fun. It's a maple syrup bottle, so sometimes you might find other style glass bottles in your everyday use, in your pantry, that you can just upcycle in this way. Let me see, that's sort of touch dry now, so... Put that over here aside. And while I wait to do a second coat on that, we'll move over here to my bookshelf, which I'm going to put a stencil on as well. We'll upcycle that. Oh, thank you so much, everybody, for the birthday blessings and the birthday wishes. Now, here is my bookshelf. I'll turn you to the side here so we can see the front door, my front entryway right here. I've left it open slightly. We've got the air conditioning on, but I did want to hear if the postage um, person came. So here is the bookshelf. I've painted the top in a, sort of an off-white color. Now, if you're watching on my Irie Store Stuff page where I'm cross-posting now, it's the color Moleskin by Artisan Mineral Paint. And that's a nice kind of, it's got some taupe undertones. And then the inside here I've done in this olive green, it's actually called Cotswold Green. That's an Australian brand, so you won't be able to get that in the USA. You can, but if you're in Australia, you can grab that on my website, irisstorestuff.com. Okay, so I am going to put a stencil on the sides of my bookshelf. So I'm going to flip it this way, guys. We'll have to do that. I just wanted to show you up the right way, but this is going to be such a, a much more, a much easier way to stencil my project if I actually have it on the side here and I can lay the stencil on top. So the two I was trying to choose from whoops, um, were the, and I, I think I showed this on my Facebook page and on my Instagram page. I was trying to choose between the eucalyptus pattern and the olive branch pattern. But because I've done this in an olive color on the inside, I really think I'm going to have to do the olive branch pattern. So both of these though, the eucalyptus or the olive branch, you can get on essentialstencil.com. Um, I've also put the link to those, I think, in the description of my live, or at least the olive branch one. So you can um, use my code, I restore stuff, and get 10% off this pattern design or any of the stencils or the rub-on transfers that you see on Essential Stencils website. So there we go. I think this must be the first time I've used this one. 
So I'll bring you closer, but here's the pattern and I'll bring you closer so you can see how it fits. Grab my, mic, uh, my camera here, see if we can go this way. And then we can sort of work on this across here. So you can see that the pattern does hang over the edge and it goes over the edge this way. Oh, I promised I would show Olive. Here she is in her little crate down here and she's got her name on the front. So there she is. She's sitting nice and quietly now. So thanks everybody <laughs> for your patience. <laughs> yes. Okay. So here is our stencil. We're going to go, and I'm not sure how many we're going to fit, but I might start at the top so that we've got, um, and I don't think there's not an upside down or a right way up because they sort of all interchange and go every which way. But I, I don't mind that going off because it gives it a look that it's completely full. So I don't mind if it goes off the stencil. Now the design, I'm going to start right at the top and the design finishes here. See if we've got a little bit of a gap there at the bottom of the stencil design. So let me see how many I'll fit down here if I put my finger right there. And we start again here. I will have this much of a gap down the bottom, so then I'll just repeat that pattern. I don't think it's not a repeating pattern type where you have to join anything. So you can really start it from anywhere. The other option I could do is sort of start it from the middle and then sort of go either side like this. And that might be a little easier to work out as well. So let's do that, shall we? I don't have to measure the exact middle because really it won't matter. It'll kind of look like one of those wallpaper designs, I think, on the side of the bookshelf. I'm excited for how this might turn out. So I need to grab a stencil brush. So we've got a whole range of our stencil brushes here in all the different sizes. If you need any stencil brushes, uh, you can get those on Essential Stencil. Use my code, I Restore Stuff. The 5 8 inch brush is a popular size and I think it's perfect for this. It's kind of a medium size stencil brush. So we've got that. I'll get my offloading cardboard. So always have a piece of paper or a cardboard handy to offload your paint onto. And because I'm starting this in the middle, um, I don't have to tape it if you just want to hold it still, but let's just do that. And also an idea for taping so that it doesn't pull off existing paint. I actually did a third coat of paint on the side here before I came on the live. So I want to just uh, place the tape on my apron or a bit of fabric or anything really. It's just picking up a little bit of fluff there so that it's not going to be too sticky on the paint and it sort of um, detackies. Is that a word? It detackifies, <laughs> detacks the paint, the um, tape so that it's not so sticky. It's okay, sweetheart. There's no one there. You're barking at nothing. All right, so then, like I said, this is the color that I used inside for the shelves of the, um, of the bookcase, but you can use any color you like. Kathy says, I use my 5 8 brush the most. Yes. Oh, you've got one of those little buckets too, Maggie. It's so handy for my stencil brushes. I love it. All right, so I'm just removing, I've shaken up my paint to get it all sort of stirred around. I actually have got a lot in the lid here, so it's probably enough to do my entire lot of stenciling. So I'm just going to dip the paint. Now this is just a mineral paint, so you can use any acrylic water-based paint for stenciling. It doesn't have to be a particular brand. Um, a lot of times I use the fusion paint, but uh, this, today I'm using Australia, Australian brand of artisan paint called Cotswold Green. <clears throat> and I'm just going to start from the top up here. Let's see. No, I'll start from the bottom where you can see it a little bit clearer. And then we'll go on from there. So because I've offloaded my brush as much as I can, um, I'm going to be able to do this swirling method without getting any bleeding underneath the stencil. So this is actually leaving just a light coat of the green. So I may actually go over and do a second coat once I'm finished. So all you have to do is I can do this swirly method because there's hardly anything on the brush. If you have too much on your brush, that's our probably the, your ambassador's most helpful tip ever. If I can stress anything 
uh, important today it would be to offload your brush until there's hardly anything on the brush. And then you can just swirl it around and you'll see when I show you up close in a minute that um, it probably will need a, a couple of coats and but I would rather go with you know one a two or three or one or two I'd rather go with two thin coats than one thick coat because if you're putting it on too thick it means that you're probably going to get oh I'm putting a little bit over the edge there but that's okay I can fix that up later um, you're going to get that bleeding under the under the edge so I just want to thank you all for joining me on Valentine's night I just realized for you guys it's uh, Valentine's what are you doing are you celebrating are you home alone Valentine's there's a lot of people in that position too so I hope you're just having a lovely evening no matter what you are doing and if you are home alone I'm so glad you joined me crafting tonight maybe you're crafting too let us know let me know in the comments I'd love to know you love that color Rhonda thank you it is nice this is going to look amazing someone just said I hope so <laughs> and like I said we may need a second coat on this so I'll just kind of be able to dry that off because I'm using all the same color on this you could even do imagine a shadowy kind of look on this as well I won't be doing that today but you know no matter what sort of stencils you're using you can do that shadow technique that I've done before <clears throat> and you can have a refer to some past stencil lives where I've done shadowing in fact I think we've got a playlist in the essential stencil Facebook page video section if you go to their video section you'll see all our past lives there and there are a couple of playlists <coughs> with ambassadors names and things like that <coughs> Olo, nothing nobody there darling no need to worry thank you for letting me know <laughs> she thinks she's our guard dog and has to bark at everything or she's maybe just letting us know something's there <clears throat> okay nearly finished this one section now I was going to have to do three anyway so I decided to start in the middle and then I'm going to go either side of this pattern and we'll see how we go with I'll see what it looks like with one coat uh, because and I might just get the hair dryer and dry that just that one section a little bit let's pop my brush there see if that reaches <coughs> and lift it up oh look at that I like it I think that's going to look amazing. Look, even without two coats, I might just leave it like that for now. I'll have a think about it. Maybe after the live, I could go back if I think it needs it to give that a second coat. So let me see if I can just bend this a little bit closer so you can see my camera closer. Oops, can you see that there? I think it's going to look great. okay so now as we do our second part <coughs> I'll move it up here I've still got my tape there but I want to move the tape to somewhere where it's kind of in between the the uh, that it's not sticking down on something that we've just painted fresh so you can see there's little bits of gaps around sorry it's probably not close enough I'll bring you closer since we're moving things around today every which way a little bit closer up here so I can see there's little gaps in here in between the olive leaf branches so I don't want it too close where it's budding right up but I want to just move it slightly there I just want to get the sides evenly hung out over the sides again and I think that's around about a good gap right there so I'm going to place my tape sort of just in between the leaves 
in between the branches. This one's a uh, stencil called Olive Branches. And I'll just take that one there. And then we can just continue on with our offloading cardboard, <coughs> excuse me, and our brush. Still got a little bit of paint left there. And we just go along now with these leaves. And you know, when I was stenciling before on that section here, and I'm looking at it and I thought, mm, it's not really a real solid, solid green. So maybe I do need a second coat. But you saw that, like once I lifted it off, it really does still almost look like a vintage vibe kind of wallpaper look, doesn't it? Because, and probably for you from on that camera angle, it might just look perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, I do like the way that that's kind of almost a vintage look. It's not exactly perfect. A little bit almost distressed or worn look. Just offloading there. Just trying to catch comments as they come every now and then. Yeah, um, Brittany says, I like the colour, doesn't look dark or too light. So, yeah, the colour's a really nice green for this. So I've got it over a, a bit of a, it's kind of a torpy coloured off-white. But, yeah, like I said, I'm, I use um, particularly furniture type paints for using on furniture because they really do adhere well. So the mineral paints are great for that. This one's Australian brand Artisan mineral paint. And then I do use Fusion mineral paint, which you can get in the USA. If you're wanting any of the furniture type paints, I can grab an affiliate link for you for those. Just let me know in the comments or just send me a message. <coughs> okay, oops, that's a little bit a little bit too much on the brush I could tell then and that's why I sort of pounced it just to be sure that it's not going to just run everywhere so I'm sort of moving that around move it around to another spot so this is hanging over the edge here which causes some of these little bits to lift up so we're just going to lift that I'll leave I use my body as a bit of um, leverage to lean it on to lean the stencil on as I go over this bit Otherwise, you could find, you know, another shelf or something to put up, prop it up beside you. But this is worth working perfectly fine to do it this way. So the other thing I was trying to decide whether I should do that in the end. I mean, I'm not going to do this all today, but I'll do one side. I'll do the other side later on. But I was wondering whether to do the top of the bookshelf also. So if you joined me earlier, you would have seen there's a top to the shelf with uh, a little lip coming up either side a little ledge coming up either side of the shelf but that kind of lends itself to you know placing things on the top so I didn't know I don't think I will put this design on the top I'll just leave it as a feature for the sides because then you might want to decorate the top with you know books or signs other decor so what do you think I think I'll leave the top plain but what would you do? And what other pattern designs could you imagine on the side of these? There's some gorgeous Easter Lily pattern stencil that um, Essential Stencil has in their collection. There's, um, oh gosh, all sorts of different stencil patterns. Okay, just going over that a little bit now that that's sort of dried down the bottom there. And ready to peel that up and have a look at what that overall look looks like. And then we'll lift up our tape. Oop, there we go. So you can see that continued pattern there. It's pretty all pretty well all evenly um, spaced out. Just hit that with the dryer just a touch. If you missed me saying so earlier, I am expecting my stencil of the month club package to arrive and it hasn't it was supposed to arrive yesterday which was 14th in my city here in Australia but it didn't arrive yesterday and I got a notification saying it's coming today it's out for delivery 
and I still don't see it, but it did say it's going to come between, like, within the next hour. So I'd be very sad if it arrived after I've finished my live. Let's hope that it arrives before then. We can open it together. So excited. So if you did miss it, Melissa did a live yesterday showcasing the Stencil of the Month Club so let me just go down here onto this end. Oh, look, Olive's going to be in the background there. She's in a little pop in her crate. Living her best life. Okay, so again, we're just going to put this down a little bit away from the design. So you can see at the other end, we couldn't really tell too much where it started and where it finished. So we're going to start around about here using that same sort of distance type factor that we did at the other end and I'm just using these gaps uh, right here where the stencil isn't to put that on. Now again it's kind of flopping over the edge here so I will need something. In fact I do have a chair. It's our uh, one of our breakfast, star bu uh, breakfast bar stools that's around about the right height so if I just leave that there. Oh look at that. Perfect height to just sit on there. So you can find something the right height or you could just use your body as a bit of a, a um, place to lean it on like I did earlier. So here is my offloading thing, cardboard, where we're just kind of offloading the paint. And we're nearly finished this first part of our live. If you missed it earlier, I've painted a bottle, a glass bottle. It's our upcycling challenge. Did I mention that? I did mention it at the beginning but maybe you missed it. If you check out the description or the pinned comment at the top, Essential Stencil will have posted there about our upcycle challenge week. Now guys, there is a special Facebook group just for the upcycle challenge. So there's a couple of things. You'll need to, um, you can join the Facebook group um, and or and share your pieces there uh, and or you need to use the hashtag and I'm not going to try and repeat it I think it's ES upcycle challenge 2024 but don't don't quote me on that you'll see it right there in the if you go to that landing page where the link is that we've put in the comments you'll see the exact hashtag that you need to use all of the details and all of the instructions are right there on that landing page and you can get a chance to win a $100 spending spree with Essential Stencil. That's the best part about the challenge. Um, but also the fact that it's just fun. It's so satisfying. I love upcycling. I, I do it often. I will go to thrift stores, pick up items that I think, oh, nobody would see any use for that. And then you can add a beautiful stencil or paint it up in a different way or strip the paint off it as well. So... Um, and then, you know, you can, I have a little shop booth in a um, antique mall in our city that I sell my uh, things that I upcycle there or I'll, you know, paint up or find antique pieces and I'll sell them in there. So it's a good idea. You can make some money thrifting and recycling or upcycling something. Olive, it's okay. It's okay. Quiet. I think she's saying hello to the people. <laughs> Maybe because she can hear the birds outside too, because I can hear those chippity chirping away. So there's our olive branch. Now this is olive branch pattern. I'm not catching all of the comments, sorry. Um, Oh good, people are answering questions. When I can't see your comments, it's so helpful that you guys are there to answer some of the questions that people might be asking, whether it's about stenciling or some of the designs or whether it's about the actual challenge. So yes, you can, um, you can add your before and after of your, of your uh, upcycle in the special Facebook group and the link to that is all in that link that we've got. All the information that you'll need is in that link that we've got in the pinned comment. So use use my link. I'd love you to do that. Olive, quiet. 
And uh, you don't have to have a before photo though. You can just show us your after photo. That's fine too. One more over here and then we've finished the side of our bookcase. I can't wait to flip it up the right way to show you. Um, and again, like I said, you may, I may want to afterwards, after having a little look at it, I'll have a look and see, to see whether I want to use a second coat on this or just to leave it at this kind of rough looking first coat, which still doesn't look too bad. We agreed, didn't we? Still doesn't look too bad. So let me just pop this down. I'll pop the paint down, put my brush in a wet cloth or a plastic bag so that that doesn't dry out in case we wanted to use that again. And let's have a look at our project, see how that turned out. Might just add a bit of, hit the hairdryer on it again. Lift that up. Oh, I love the way that's turned out. So you all probably want a, a bit more of a bird's eye view, is that what you call it? Or a look back to see how that turns out. Sorry, I've got a little microphone cable that I'm trying not to step on here as well. Um, okay, so let me just pop the camera back a little. And wow, there it is. So that's my bookshelf upside down. Let me just see if I can flip that the right way up so we can see that finished, how it's sort of going to look. So we've got that same olive color inside the shelf. Oop, I just hit the floor. I'm trying to put it on this cardboard so that it doesn't mark the floor. But let me just turn that one on the side. Look at that. Hang on. Move it this way a bit, I think. Oops, no, wrong way. You see Olive <laughs> checking it out. Okay, so there's the side of our shelf. I love it. I love how that looks. So see, I don't know about putting something on the top as well. I will do the other side after our live but I don't know about doing the top because that's somewhere where you would put things. What Do you agree? Do you agree that we should just leave the top as it is? Let's see what you think. All right, so I'm going to move this back here. We'll have that in the background as I go on to my next little project over here. And that is our bottle that we were doing before. And still no postman with the stencil of the month club. So plan B it is so far. And I just need to put on another coat of my chalk paint. So I was doing this in a chalk paint and you can see chalk paint sometimes will need a second coat because kind of it looks a little bit messy but as we do our second coat you'll see it'll all come together. And that's the same with when you're painting furniture. So there's a tip for you um, today when you're painting your furniture sometimes you'll do a coat of paint and if you've ever done painting furniture or decor of any kind you kind of look at it and you think oh my goodness have I just ruined my project because that looks terrible but honestly that second coat will it'll all come together so so look at all the streaks you've got there it is a cute bottle isn't it and yes people are saying to leave the top yeah so I might just leave the the top of the um, bookshelf as is. Okay, so I'm going to paint this second coat on and you'll be able to see how that will just come up a lot nicer. Okay, so here's all our streaks here that we've got going on. If I just paint one more coat over that. And chalk paint is a lot thicker than your other types of uh, latex or acrylic paints it does tend to be although I say thicker but it did it, it still does take a couple of coats but you will see a bit more uh, brush, brush strokes in it or lines in it if you paint, and sometimes uh, it does start to dry very quickly so if it does start to dry quite quickly sometimes I'll just mist with my little misting bottle and just add a bit of water to the paint. Now which side was I working on? Here we go. So there we go. We've got a, a lot more coverage on there now. Oops, sorry. It's a, maple, yeah, it's a maple syrup bottle, correct. Someone um, asking that in the comments. But I love the little detail that we've got down the bottom. So there we've got a lot better coverage 
on that. See if I can hold the sides and do the back of it. Olive. She's just found an extra little bark or two this week and gets a little bit annoying. We're going to have to look up some training on how to reduce the barking. She is now seven and a half months old. Pup, cavoodle, we call them here in Australia, but I think over there you call them a cavapoo. So it's a cross between a cavalier, King Charles Spaniel, and a poodle. And she's a cross between a King Charles Spaniel and a toy poodle. So she's actually, I suppose you would call that a toy cavalier, a toy cavoodle here. Okay, so there's a little bit of paint that's just come off that top part there. Do you see that little patch? If that happens, that's usually because that first coat was a little bit, um, uh, I don't know what the word, it's just not adhering as well on that first coat. And so what I have to do is wait for that to completely dry and then go over that again. So we're just upcycling an old maple syrup bottle. So what I've done today, and if you've missed the the beginning of my live, you'll notice oh, I tried to go over that bit again and it's pulling more paint off. So sometimes when you're doing that second coat, you'll find it's pulling even more paint off. Oh, look, I can put my finger in here and then we can get that stabilized to be able to go onto the other side. But if we want to dry this and then distress it a little bit, then that little bit of paint that's not adhering there will, it, and maybe there was some, you know, a bit of grease or grime on it because that can sometimes affect your surface that you're trying to paint over. My computer has gone to sleep, so I'm not seeing our comments. There we go. Oh yes, Sandy says that bottle would be cute with some ribbon or jute around the top. Yes, it would. Let's see if we can dry that as well. And the other thing I had, that you could try is a little serving board, but I'm sure that there's people with lots of different ideas of things just around your house. So without even going out to the thrift store, what, what frames or pictures have you got? You might have some canvases that have some artwork on them that you're like, mm, I'm over that, it's a different style now, I need to upstyle it differently. So there's all sorts of fun ideas that you could do. Brittany says I've got to go find a glass syrup bottle. <laughs> yes, Sandy, you had the same issue. Two coats on a porcelain lamp. Yeah, sometimes porcelain and glass um, can have just these little bits at, that you think, maybe if I had a, sanded that to scuff sand it a little bit and give it a bit of something to adhere to, it might have been a better idea. So, but this is going to dry probably just enough to where I can either stencil it or add a transfer. So I think without my stencil of the month club arriving just yet, I'm gonna go with my plan B. <laughs> hey, and that wasn't even meant to be a pun. My plan B, get it guys? I have to go with my plan B because my stencil of the month club hasn't arrived today. Um, we're still looking for that. I'm going to go with the honeybee transfers. Now, I, I did look before the live and I can't remember if there was just a few of these left or it was the stamps that there was just a few left of. So I'm going to find something that's going to work and fit in that sort of space there. So let's have a look. I do love this, this flower, I think, right here with the bee in the middle. That would fit perfectly on there. I'm not sure how the white would go on the white. I think it would still work. Or the other idea I could do, which I did think of, is use a little bit of some brown paint. I'm using a little bit of Fusions Brown just to add a bit of a background to that before we put this on, because let's cut that out. I do like it and it fits perfectly, so we'll go with that. Oh, I love the little lavender sprigs in here as well. But this would look adorable with some flowers coming out of the jar, just like a bit of a a bud vase or something like that. Yeah, this is going to fit perfectly. I think it goes that way. It's the perfect size for it. 
But what I'm concerned about is, is the white going to come out? It's a magnolia flower, isn't it? Is the white on white going to be a little bit not able to be seen? So I'm going to try a, diff a little bit of a technique using a stencil brush and just a touch of this brown paint. I have not tried this before, just letting you know. So hopefully it works. But I just want to add a bit of a shadowy background, almost like aging it a bit. So I'm just going to get a stencil brush, a little half inch brush, grab a tiny bit of that offload and dry my brush like so. Teaching a little technique that I haven't tried on chalk paint before, but um, I don't know, I thought, here's what we could do too. Instead of distressing the bottle to make this stand out, we could actually use this brush as a bit of a, I'm honestly so nervous because I'm thinking, I've not tried this before. Who knows if it's even going to work, Sharon? We're going to give it a go. It's just a bottle that I was going to throw in the trash, right? So what could go wrong? We can just start again. So I'm just hitting the highlights, hitting the high points of these edges here. And it actually looks like we've distressed those little ridges. So instead of distressing, we could use the brush dry brush method to go over that. Now let's see, can you see that detail? And compared to one that's not done and there, it just sort of gives it a bit of a, and I'm going lightly because I don't want to do it too much. Now I'm just going to add a bit of a, let's see if we can go, go a little bit more. Donna, you put yours on white and it looked great. Yeah, it probably will look fine because it's a different color white, exactly, Mary. I agree. But I like this idea of trying something new, so <laughs> let's just keep going with it. So what I'm going to do is just sort of give it a bit of a brushed in look. We're going to go, this is that patch that we had here. I'm even going to just not worry about that. We're going to add a bit of aging technique, just using a bit of brown paint. Now the paint color I'm using is Woodwick by Fusion Mineral Paint. And I'm just brushing over that there, almost gives it an aged look. Check it out. I think I like that. Now also, because chalk paint has a bit more of a, it's got a porous finish, so this is going to stick well to it. It's also got texture, so you can see the lines and the texture. So we're going to just hit the edges here. So we're adding a bit more brown around the edges. And you can try this on one side and then try it on the other. Now I'm going to do a little bit extra down here. Now I'm coming in from those edges and just now I'm going to think about just doing a bit of swirling to kind of give it a grungy, dirty look. And then we're going to put the flower and that's going to be background. Okay. So again, here's what it looks like before, just plain white. And then I've just added a little bit of aging and texture. Can you see that? Phew, I think it worked. Here's me winging it again. So we'll just add that brush to the wet cloth. And now I'm going to go over and do this with the transfer tool. So we're just using our Honey Bee transfer set. And here we go. We remove the paper backing, the white backing, and now we've got a clear plastic with the image. Um, the sticky side is on the back and you can see the image clearly here. So we're going to put that on top of our paint. Now don't try this with wax because wax is a repeller of things like paint and it will probably repel the transfers also and it won't be able to stick. So just make sure you don't try that with wax, do try it with a bit of paint. So here's our beautiful little flower with the bee. And it's going to make a great little old, old world look. So I'm just using a plastic tool that you can get from Essential Stencil or you can use your credit cards or store cards or something like that as well. I'm just rubbing on top of the plastic until all of the transfer is stuck to the bottle. And then what we want to do is just start to remove 
<coughs> so we're just going to remove the plastic up here and see if that's stuck down already. If I do see any bits that aren't stuck down properly, I just rub over them. Oops, did I? I can't see the camera and where I'm looking, so there you go. That's coming off really nicely. I don't see any any bits stuck to it yet. Maybe down here. See that coming up? A little bit <coughs> more there. <coughs> hey, Olive, do you think it's the <coughs> post? Is the post <coughs> post bringing my stencils? <coughs> Can you tell? <coughs> I would love them to turn up right now with my stencil of the month club. That would be amazing. So all we're doing is rubbing that until we see the transfer come off. I'm just going to lay that down because it's a bit easier to do, a little bit quicker. <clears throat> and then what I do is just rub that down with my fingers to make sure all the bubbles have come out, that it's all smooth across the surface. You can see how lovely that looks. I should go and look, make sure it's not at the front door and I've missed it, hey. Okay, so there is the front of our bottle. Now you could do something on the back as well. We could do that same sort of technique. Let me just check. I will do a quick, quick check. Let's have a look over here. Make sure you can see the side and I'll show you. I'm just literally going to the front door with my little microphone cable to make sure I haven't missed my stencils. No, it's not here yet. I'm so sad. Guys, Olive, you've been looking out for me. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, guys, one more. See if I can fit in this one more last little project, and that is to do this little signboard here. And I was going to use um, another bee, another bee stencil, or I was going to use the chocolate bunny ones. Ooh, let's see. Oh no, that was going to fit on one of my tea towels. Let's do a tea towel instead. I'll grab the tea towel. <clears throat> Any one of these. If you joined me earlier, I, I have literally just been looking for things around my house that might work for a stencil project. So this is going to be a super quick one. <clears throat> a little towel for Easter. So make sure when you're doing a tea towel, you put the hook side. Make sure that... <clears throat> is at the top. So this is the part, the center is where it's going to hang over your oven rack or wherever you put them. If you do hang them by the hook, then the stencil doesn't show quite as nicely, but it's still, it will still look cute. Now this is a six pack chocolate bunny set. Use my code, I restore stuff, look up chocolate bunny, get your 10% off. It's got a cute bunny with its little bow on the top there. I love this one. Follow the bunny. He is, oh, he has chocolate. <laughs> Um, so we've got that. I'm just here for the chocolate gourmet chocolate sweetest in town. I like that one for the idea of a tea towel. Then we've got jelly beans, cream eggs, marshmallow, and a cute bunny with it. Um, ear bitten, ear bitten, ear bitten bunny. Funny, funny bunny. Okay, so we want to place that in the center of our tea towel, imagining that's the center line there, which it is. Now, again, I said before, these tea towels are actually used ones. I'm just bringing them a little closer so you can see. And I think we'll use that chocolatey colour. Where is it? That woodwick colour that we used on this brush here. And my offloading cardboard is still, still got some chocolate on it. If I wanted to, I could place these tabs, just the tape down on there. <coughs> And we've got some chocolate left, but I'll grab some more. I called it chocolate. The color is actually Woodwick by Fusion Mineral Paint. It's a lovely chocolate brown. It's probably a milk chocolate, not a dark chocolate. Sonia says it's been a while since I've done a dish towel. They make great gifts. Now, obviously mine's secondhand. I would not give this as a gift. I'm gonna be using this one in my house. Now for fabric, sometimes it's a little bit wibbly wobbly. So if this little rabbit here has a wider space, a bit more of a area to fill. 
So I want to just be pouncing that and sort of pouncing and wriggling instead of swirling because if you swirl it's going to move the fabric around underneath. So that's my top tip if you're doing fabric, uh, if you're stenciling on fabric. That goes with any kind of stretch fabric especially like t-shirts and um, definitely have stenciled t-shirts before. I love stenciling t-shirts uh, but also with some of these cotton type things you can um, you may it may take a little bit extra uh, paint as well and that's why it's always good to have something backing behind your project. So if this was a t-shirt you would put a little piece of cardboard or something inside the t-shirt to stop the paint going through the other side although I've never actually had that happen. And again just pouncing on here or um, what I would say is pounce and wriggle. So pounce and wriggle that around just like so. And I'm going all around that little circle there. And this is such a really simple, easy upcycle to do. So it might be that you've got some spare dish towels in your closet that you haven't even opened yet or haven't used and they look quite plain. You could just do them up like this is going to be great for Easter, right? Have that displayed when you're cooking at Easter time or making your Easter treats. Does anyone actually make their own cho Easter chocolate? That would be lovely. They used to have all the chocolate molds for Easter eggs. Yeah, Sandy says she loves the circular designs. I do too. I think it makes it look, um, it almost makes it look like a vintage stamp that's been, you know, stamped on a, see that's got the grain sack stripes on this, the little red grain sack stripes on it. I could have done it in sort of a red colour as well, but I was a bit afraid that I couldn't actually match the red, but it almost looks like, you know, the old, I'm imagining a big sack of flour or something and has a stamp on it. It kind of gives it that kind of a vintage vibe, I think, don't you? Yeah, so Rhonda's saying you tried swirling on material and it's hard to do it, keep moving and bunching up. So yeah, I just like, you go, this is the movement, pounce, wriggle. And don't, don't move your brushes or swirl your brushes, just wriggle them. And that allows the paint to get into the letters. Sorry, I would, if I could, I would move this a bit closer so you can see. But um, So otherwise, it's going to slightly move the fabric and we don't want that to happen. Well, we're almost out of time and we are going to choose some winners. When I've finished with this, I will be looking for them when I finish this tea towel. And alas, my postie, we call them in Australia, the postie, did not bring my Stencil of the Month Club set yet. So that's a bit sad, but I will have to make something during the week. We'd love to. Oh, you know what? That's it. And of course, right away. Excuse me while I just go get the door. Hang on. Oops. That's it, guys. It's my stencil of the month. What did you know the tying of? Of course, I'm not going to be able to do it now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, now, now we've got the. Now we've got the door speaking to itself. What are the chances? Right as I'm about to finish the live, and I've just put it on top of my paint. <clears throat> That's it. Okay, Olive. It's okay, Dana. Shh. Olive. Olive. It's okay. All gone. All finished. Okay. First, let me show you chocolate bunny. Then I want to just open up the package and at least show you what we've got. And I'll have to do that later. All right. Olive. Olive. Settle. Settle. Good settle. Okay, so here is our little chocolate chocolate bunny. Isn't that cute? It just looks like a, a vintage kind of stamp. And let's just open up as we finish off and look for our look for our um, winners. I'm going to just open up if you haven't seen it yet the stencil of the month club set. 
<coughs> and this was a collaborative design with Melissa Miller from Miller's Rustic Sawmill. DHL always, I think it's customs, they always have to open my package and then seal it back up again. Okay, ta-da, here we are and it's arrived today. My Stencil of the Month Club set, so I can quickly show you. Guys, how exciting, it's actually here. <laughs> oh my goodness, the timing, hey? Thank you so much, Melissa. The chocolate bunny is super cute on the tea towel. Thank you. Now don't forget, our upcycle challenge is for the next two weeks. I wanted to show you, first of all, our Stencil of the Month Club set, literally just arrived. If you heard the doorbell, if you've just joined me, that's what's just happened. We've got the add-on, we've got the premium set. So the premium set is right here, upside down. Family tree. That would look super cute on a tea towel, don't you think? Or a cushion. Maybe you could do like a family tree cushion or something like that. So I, I'm so annoyed that I couldn't make this today because we've run out of time. But um, it comes with the family tree, then it comes with, so this is the premium set, so you can choose from a premium or a basic plan. And we've got the gorgeous family, our family tree sign with the banner that you can use, the hearts. Then we've got a couple of sayings there, a family isn't made from blood, it's made from love. And these are the good old days, that is so cute. And then the other thing we've got is some more sayings. Let me just turn those over so you can see them on the black background. If you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Great little sayings. Life is short, make it sweet. And thank you for all those I love. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's the premium plan. So if you use my code, I restore stuff, you'll get 50% off your first month on the premium plan or... If you get the basic plan, you get your first month free. So if you're just wanting to try the Stencil of the Month Club, if you've never um, tried it before, this is a good chance to get a taste of what you can expect. And there are three different stencil sets, like three pages of each set. So this one's smaller, obviously, a lot smaller, but you still get something <clears throat> uh, from the tree. Family, like branches on the tree, we all grow, yet our... Yet our roots remain as one. Sorry, I was not reading it properly. And then you've got this, which is another saying, life is short, da 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 da. And then we've got, and thank you for those I love. So with the basic plan, you don't get the tree, but you do get a bunch of beautiful family sayings that is perfect to use with your family tree. Also, um, Essential Stencil always adds <coughs> excuse me, an optional add-on. So your add-on this month is this gorgeous big branch and you can use these hearts to hang on the branches. So I'll show you exactly what that looks like right here. So the hearts hang on the branches and also this beautiful saying which you saw in the basic set. So if you do get the basic set, you get this saying. If you get the add-on, you get that saying. Isn't that beautiful? So ah, I will have to go and just make something out of that today. So if you missed our live at the beginning, I uh, did our stencil on my bookshelf. I've upcycled the bookshelf from my garage. It's gonna look brand spanking new again. That's what upcycling is all about. And then we did this gorgeous bottle, kind of vintaged it, made it look aged and antique, added a honeybee transfer. And we also stenciled this cute Easter kind of dish towel. And I'll show you the stencil of the month club. So let me see if I can see on here if we've got our winners yet. Let me know if you see the winners. And um, if you're here on my I Restore Stuff page, if you're watching there, because I cross-posted in two places at once, you will need to be on the Essential Stencil page. Go and um, comment the word uh, uh, replay over there if you're watching the replay. All right, our winners, if I can scroll back, is Teresa, Joanne, and Kristen. Those three... Teresa, Joanne and Kristen, hopefully it uh, tagged your names there, but look for your name in the winners, always look. You can email support at essentialstencil.com and um, they will send you your prizes. Tell them you are a, uh, a winner on Sharon Hankins Live today, this Valentine's Day, which also happens to be my birthday because I'm in Australia and it's the 15th and that's my birthday today. Thank you so much all of you who've sent birthday wishes. That's amazing and I hope you enjoyed that live today. Don't forget, join Stencil of the Month Club. 
Don't miss out on those and be a part of the Upcycle Challenge. I think it's hashtag, no, I'm going to get it wrong. Hashtag ES Upcycle 20 Challenge 2024. But all the details right there in the link. Click on it. Bye.